move into homes, um, sometimes people just can't visualize the space that well and know they're sort of like, I don't even know where to start. So it's nice being able to help people move in right away and maximize their space. So you're not living in a space for six, seven months and there's still boxes that are unpacked around, which happens because people don't know what to do with their stuff. So. <laughs> and Lily's pointing at her boxes right behind her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's really, that's it's great. Good. <laughs> so Deb, a little bit about you and your lovely California closet designing self. So I'm from uh, Comac, Long Island and Smithtown. I lived in Smithtown for a bit. Shout out Smithtown. Um, I started working at California Closets about eight years ago. I was a graphic designer working for the NFL designing the game day programs and the snuggies, the blankets with sne sleeves. So that was fun until it wasn't anymore. So then I just, uh, my friend's dad bought the franchise and he needed designers. So I was just like, whatever, I have nothing to lose. And then I ended up really enjoying it. You know, the 3D CAD software is really great. It's similar to, you know, all the graphic design programs. So it was a smooth transition and I ended up moving to Queens and Bayside because a bulk of my business is here. And now it's been really great as within the last couple of years, because developers are really understanding the importance of custom closet systems. And I'm working with Skyline Tower, which is 800 apartments, 3,200 closets. They sold all the units with the closets completely empty. So now I'm meeting with all the buyers before they move in to customize all the closets for them. So it's been really great. So I feel like all the developers are pretty much golf buddies. So it's been one building after another. So it's been really fantastic. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you girls. You're thriving. Thank you. And doing great and to have so much value to add. So um, I want to let you ladies kind of want to dive into giving some tips and tricks and then we could go through some of the questions that people had submitted through the sign up form if that's okay with you or if you want me to ask the questions first it's your show I'll do whatever you ladies want. Um, I feel like there are definitely a lot of questions. So I want to save time because I kind of have a lot of answers to the questions. So I mean, I can definitely just give everyone some tips and just a little bit of motivation for this season spring cleaning for a few minutes. And that Deb, you can talk about closets for a little bit. And then we'll just dive into questions. Does that work? That works for me. Fabulous. So I was thinking about what to talk about because it's like everyone sort of knows what spring cleaning is, but it's a year since COVID and quarantine happened and we've been in our spaces, a lot of us working from home or a lot of us recently moved. And I feel like we're all a lot more aware of our personal belongings this year because we've been around them a lot more. So I'm getting a ton of calls right now where people are really like, excited to shed a lot this spring um just because a lot of the things in their life don't really serve a purpose anymore they realized how much clutter was around them and they also realized how much physical and mental stress constant clutter can cause and it really can um create like roadblocks in pro productivity at home in time doing things that you love uh they say we use about a year of our life looking for stuff and when I heard that statistic I'm like that's crazy I'd rather travel the word world for a year than constantly not know where my keys are or like fight with my husband about where the keys are <laughs> um so I feel like this year is definitely a lot of people are motivated and I feel like, you know, my, my, my first tip always is take a deep breath, be kind to yourself. Don't like get too hard on yourself about stuff. A lot of, um, when you really start purging, decluttering, editing your space and reevaluating your space, you kind of have to like take your time with it. I know a lot of people want it to be done in a day, but realistically, I feel like that's not always the best thing to do unless you really, really know everything that you're ready to part ways with. But I feel like it's important to kind of do a little out of time, live in the space a little bit. And something else to keep in mind, it's not necessarily only about the decluttering and the getting rid of stuff and the purging. I feel like a lot of us need to be more mindful about what we actually bring into our home. So I know for me, it was really um, useful to kind of unsubscribe from a lot of retail emails because, you know, J. Crew sending an email every day, Banana Republic, and you're like, oh, but wait, there's a sale. Like, I don't want to miss out on this. And I feel like a lot of us are constantly buying stuff just because the price tag seems friendly, but it's not necessarily something we would really be buying full price or things that we actually really need 
in our homes. Does that resonate with anyone? <laughs> yeah. <Sure does. laughs> you know, I think people get the FOMO of the sale or the FOMO of like, oh, I have to have this because it's on an Instagram ad and every blogger is using it and it means that I need it. And I think we all just need to kind of be a little bit more conscious about like what we bring into our home. So in the future, you don't feel like, oh, wow, I spent all this money and now I'm throwing all this stuff in the garbage. So yeah, those are some some thoughts I had today when I was thinking about our event and this past year and what spring cleaning means to us this year. Deb, do you have anything to add? Uh, regarding the closets, I mean, definitely process wise, I really feel like it's important for people. And I just came from a client today, you know, let's figure out what we're keeping and what we're getting rid of first before I come over, if you can, if it's possible. So if I am doing inventory of what you own and you're telling me half the stuff here, we're not going to have anymore. It makes it harder for me to design a space for you. If I, we don't really know what you're keeping, what you're not. So I think it, that's a little more efficient, but, um, definitely I feel like I'm getting a huge spike in people, you know, reaching out to me regarding, um, trying to factor in some sort of clothes or desk somewhere since everyone's working from home. Um, which I mean, is important, especially in Queens, like a lot of people are incorporating these desk areas into their bedrooms, which is really tough. Um, only because you're sleeping and it's like, feels like you're sleeping in your office. So, I mean, it's definitely something to, you know, keep in mind when we're designing, cause now putting a desk somewhere is taking up space from somewhere else. So, you know, being mindful of, you know, what we're keeping and what we're not and maybe call Drea first, help her, have her help you do a purge before I come in. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, it's having a custom closet system doesn't have to be super expensive. And I feel like people get a little nervous about the price tag. You can make, build a standard closet system at $500. And it's just hanging and shelving. You don't need anything crazy. You don't need drawers. You, Drea can send you some links for cute baskets. There's ways to keep the cost down. So I would just, you know, be open to having a designer come over and assess the space. Cause you, most of you probably just have a standard pole and a shelf in all your closets and it just doesn't work for anyone. And you don't realize it until you let someone design something for you. Deb, it's so funny that you said that because literally my last two consultations I went on, I was like, you don't really even need me yet. You need a closet. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> tiny hole in here and you're trying to fit your, your life stuff in this one closet. And it's a lot of buildings just do that because I think they assume if people really want to, they'll customize it themselves. But it's just like a waste of space. So I feel like a lot of times when we are evaluating our space, you know, I always say, look up. I always constantly look up. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's two feet of space on top of this wall that's not being used. Can you put nice baskets there and maybe put stuff that you don't use as often so you don't feel like there's stuff all over the floor? Um, same with closets. It's like really just learning how to kind of utilize the space best so you're not just feeling like, I, I always see that there's like piles of stuff on the floor and then that top shelf is like completely empty. So it's about a lot of times, you know, organizing is about creating systems that work for you and really understanding your lifestyle and your inventory. So I think being mindful of that stuff would really help the process too. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like a lot of people, when you're talking about going up, a lot of people are moving into new homes where they're bringing furniture with them, which is fine. But sometimes when you're clustering random pieces of furniture together, they're not going as tall as you want them to go because they stop at a random height. And then, yeah, you've got all this dead space above that you're not able to use and it's bulky and deep. So if you, I tell people focus on getting all your hanging clothes inside of the closet. And then if we need to build elsewhere, you can build a shallow 14 inch deep wall unit going floor to ceiling that is even in white. So it blends in with the walls and it looks just like, it just looks like a piece of the apartment or a piece of the house. So it just, yeah, I mean, there, we, I can go into a rabbit hole with this stuff. So, <laughs> somebody just asked, what's the rule for purging? Dre, I'm gonna let you tackle that one. Someone asked what? What's the rule for purging? 
Oh, I don't really know if there's rules that are just like one rule for everyone kind of thing. That to me is like a a situational sort of thing. Um, some rules are, for example, if you haven't worn it in X amount of time, whether it's a year or two years, whatever feels good for you, maybe it's time to let it go. Um, another rule is one in one out. So if you do end up buying something new and you're bringing that into your life, can you get rid of something that maybe, you know, doesn't serve you anymore and you can donate it and give it to someone else so that you're not, you don't keep filling up your space and things are getting crammed up. Um, Another rule, I think, you know, if you follow Marie Kondo, she really like takes everything out of the closet and puts it in a huge pile on top of the bed and goes through it. I'm not a huge fan of that. To me, that I, I just find that a little overwhelming at times, but it does work for people to be able to kind of take everything out, start from scratch, and also just like see the blank slate again. So that really works too. I highly recommend reading her books and her method. Um, but yeah, those we also are- had, we had Laura Catano on the podcast and she was talking about how, you know, when you are purging items, sit with the piece and figure out what it, why it is that you're letting go of it and learn from it to stop yeah. the cycle of consuming and letting go. Cause that's, you don't want to keep buying things and constantly getting rid of things also. Yeah. A hundred percent. A lot of it has to do with the shopping, I swear. <laughs> and you have a lot of site recommendations too, right? Because I remember back when I hosted an event for an Empower Hour, you recommended, I know there was like Poshmark, Red Up, and a couple of sites yeah. for purging or and or selling, reselling stuff. Yeah, and I think some people hold back on the purging and the decluttering because they do feel like it's money that they spent. So if that is something that really matters to you, then selling up some type of resell account might help you with that. So Poshmark is great. If you have like higher end brands, the real, real and Linda stuff does a really good job. Um, a lot of people still use eBay too, but I feel like then you can kind of at least make some of your money back. So you don't feel like, Oh, I wasted this money on this item that I never used. I also really recommend finding a, um, perhaps like a charity that you really like, or that you've researched and feel very, uh, passionate about because I work with a company called Our Children Shops in Astoria. They help formerly incarcerated women who've gotten out of prison and now they're getting their lives back together and they need a lot of stuff. And I feel like when I tell my female clients that they're like, here, take all of this. It's been, I just didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want to bring it to one of the bins in a gas station because you don't know where it's going to end up and people resell it or whatever it may be. But once I feel like you find a place that you really, really um, are just passionate about, you will end up being more generous with your stuff. I had a good tip once too about like I have all these old like pillows and blankets that I don't want to do with and sheets and stuff. And Dre is like, bring them to an animal shelter. They're always taking that stuff. Yes. And um, you don't realize how much space frees up in your closets when you get rid of pillows. Yeah. Um, yeah. Animal hospitals too, animal shelters, they love taking old bedding and towels because a lot of them get surgery when they get neutered and they put that stuff in the crates, they use it, uh, crates, they use it for after surgery, or if it's a scared animal, they like to put like cozy stuff in the crates with them. So a lot of places are usually taking donations for that stuff. Some places are a little like, might say no to comforters and pillows just because they take up a lot of room. So it depends on the place where they can take that. But most like sheets, towels, um, lightweight blankets, I've never no one's ever turned me away. <laughs> I've only got turned away with comforters. Someone asked, someone asked if you could share the organization for women leaving incarceration. Um, it's Our Children's. Um, they're based in Long Island City, but it's our as in H-O-U-R, like out time hour. So Our Children um, is the name of the organization. I believe it's through St. Rita's church in Astoria or Long Island City, but it is affiliated with a church. Um, and they also have shops. So a lot, I usually bring stuff to a shop. They sometimes do resell things if they're in good qual- if they're good quality, but for a fraction of the cost. And a lot of them are by like 
the projects in Astoria. So, and they also employ a lot of these women. So they will actually be working in the store or they'll be doing like delivery and pickups and stuff like that. So yeah, I really like them a lot. Perfect. There's a lot of comments in the box. So if anyone needs other suggestions of where to bring things, we had a lot of great resources that were filled in. So check the chat box out. Um, is there any other thing that Deb Andrea wants to add before I start asking some of the questions that we got? Um, I would say too, just if anybody needs help, uh, I'm obviously here to help. I work in New York City, Long Island, Westchester. Um, I have clients in Connecticut and New Jersey too. But even if you need help virtually with just a plan, because like, you know, it, it's hard giving everyone the same rule for purging and everyone's lifestyle is different. But if you need something a little bit more custom where it's like, you need to learn a little bit about my lifestyle to understand where I'm coming from, I'm available to do virtual consultations as well as like virtual sessions if anybody needs help or if any of your clients need help with that. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it. And Jennifer yeah. asks, where's the best place to purchase affordable closet systems in the chat box? So Deb works for California Closet, and I feel like a lot of people assume that they are high, the highest price point out there, but it's really not true. Like I've worked with them and I've worked with Container Store before and some of their systems, you know, not everything's going to be like this crazy Instagrammable walk-in closet with glass shelves. They can keep it really basic and amazing too. So I love working with them because I find that uh, the quality is really good. The installers are really good and the designers like Deb are really good and they know what they're doing. I also do work with Ikea uh, pack systems a lot. So if someone needed help just designing something with Ikea on their design planner, I'm available to do that as well. Um, Our product is actually less expensive than the container store closets. So if you have container store plans and you want a price check, you can send me the plans and I can send you a quote with our system. Yeah. Um, and I'm also doing virtual also. So if you guys want, need help and you want a rough sketch of what we could do, if you just send me some rough measurements of the space, I can absolutely send you some plans. Yep. Yeah, they're very mm -hmm. proactive, very resourceful, easy act, like access. <laughs> and they're on Instagram. They have websites. Deb posted their Two Girls, One Closet podcast website. I know Drea has dreamorganizationnewyork.com. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll provide all of their contact information, you know, yep. in that box at the end. And I'll also include it in an email of the replay of this because I did record it just so we have it for future references if anyone missed out and couldn't join. So. Awesome. Yeah, let's get to the questions because there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of questions. <laughs> So, oh, which is really great. So we have a question saying, how do we organize in a short amount of time? And how do you um, label stuff so you can remember where you put it? Those were the first set of questions that we received. I love the first question because Andrea, I'll let you talk about the second one because that's your jam. Uh, we had Tyler Moore on our podcast, uh, Tidy Dad. If any of you don't follow him, you should follow him. He is a wealth of information. He pretty much talks about his strategy for organizing and um, cleaning his house. And instead of what most of us do, like dedicating a day to cleaning and organizing the whole day, which who wants to do that, especially when it's on a weekend, when we all have off, he sets his alarm clock in the morning and spends 15 minutes every morning doing an area of the house. And it's like his alone time, the kids are still sleeping and he makes his coffee. He either cleans the kitchen, cleans the bathroom. He sets a timer and just spends 15 minutes every day. That's awesome. Yep, I actually um, took a little bit of that for my own uh, lifestyle. And I don't really love spending a whole day of cleaning also, but I designated like a room for each day. So like mm -hmm. Tuesdays, because it's garbage night, I clean my kitchen and I, you know, maybe like spend 20, 30 minutes where I just like wipe everything down, make sure the dishwasher, everything's clean, empty, <clears throat> clean the floors, vacuum, get rid of the garbage, wipe down the fridge. And I just sort of do that now, like once a week, you know, and of course every night you tidy up a little bit, you know, um, but I feel like I, I've been doing that. And then like Friday night, I like to do the living room because if I have some friends come over for the weekend, I like for it to be really nice in the living room. So I've been doing like a room kind of a day lately. And I feel like that's been really, really 
a lot of fun when it comes to like cleaning and tidying up. I would say like purging again, it's like such a, everyone has different stuff. So you could implement that system where it's like, okay, I give myself maybe like a one week schedule where day one, I do clothes, day two, I do books, day three, I do toiletries and bathroom stuff. Day four, I do, um, sheets, blankets, stuff like that. Day five, I do pantry and kitchen. And as opposed to it being really, really overwhelming in one day, if you break it up and maybe do like a seven or 10 day challenge for yourself and just focus like a category each day and whether that takes some people, it could take 10 minutes, some people it could be an hour, but it's still not like a massive uh, overwhelming session at once. That's really helpful because I know I'm not one that loves cleaning. So it's like breaking it down into pieces. And that's yeah, it's do. like, yeah, I don't either. And it kind of always smells clean. Like, you know, it's sort of just like always tidy, but I prefer to like put on some music and just like clean a room for 20, 30 minutes, like once a day. And then I'm sort of done. And then everything kind of stays neat. Perfect. And then um, we have a question in the box What's the fee structure for some of this stuff? So I'm happy to send like price rates and stuff like in an email, I have a price sheet, um, but included in my, I do either hourly or I, I work um, with a package because some people like to buy more hours because I'll go monthly for maintenance or they want to do their um, home in different sections, whatever it might be. And then I also include like donation trips, shopping trips and product research in my rates too. So I'll send all of that um, in an email if anyone's interested and feel free to pass along to your, to your clients as well to the realtors out there. <laughs> yeah, well, real estate, we need it. I know Kay goes into houses and starts moving people's stuff around. Wait, is everyone in here an agent? No, I see some of my, our past clients, some of our friends are on here. So it's a really good oh, mix. Gotcha. Janet and Lily are agents in our office, Kaylin, obviously myself. Um, and then I have a mix of friends and clients on here, which is nice. Awesome. Cool. Regarding yeah. labeling, I love, um, I have a P-Touch label maker. You can find them on Amazon. There are different price points. I've used the expensive fancy one and I've used the $14 one. And besides like, different decorative stuff with the fonts I don't really find much of a difference and I like simple labels up anyway I either like like a clear back with like black font just very minimal but I totally believe in getting a label maker if you like labeling it's so easy it's like a little mini computer you type what you need and that way you can maintain it because a lot of times you know I'll come in and label everything but you know, seasons might change or you might add new stuff to your kitchen. So it's good for you to sort of stay on top of that stuff. I believe labels are silent communicators between <laughs> for anyone who has I like, love that. Dre is obsessed with their label maker. It's so adorable. I well, love it too. You can't be an organizer without a label. <laughs> <It's> like half <laughs> the job. <laughs> but um, I find that like some of my clients don't like to nag each other at home so instead of everyone trying to remember where things go off the top of the head and then the wife is mad at the husband because he put the mixing bowl in the wrong drawer if everything's labeled everybody just know where knows where stuff goes so it will alleviate some fighting at home too i think kaylin is when david never knows where anything is <laughs> it, it's like because then if they put it away in the wrong place and it's like Dude, there's literally a label that just says it. It's not hard. Just put it away. <laughs> yeah, no, it, the struggle could be real sometimes. I mean, Kaylin comes to my house and puts things away and I never know where she puts anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know Giuseppe had a question. Best tips of organizing a kitchen when you don't have a pantry. So that's a pretty good one. I'm trying to definitely address the questions for the people who are on here. And then I'll ask some of the other questions, you know, if we have time at the end. Great. So I'll keep this quick on my end. Um, cardboard boxes, like if you have a box of oatmeal and there's just one package sitting in this box of oatmeal for six months, because it's a box of oatmeal that you don't really use that often, complete waste of space. I'm like, when I get new granola bars, I, I get rid of all the boxes and I try to keep stuff in a bin. So I feel like you have to kind of sort of look at your stuff and see where there's wasted space. I know the struggle is real in New York with like kitchens and not having pantries. I, a lot of my clients too will use maybe like 
a territory of the entryway closet or the front closet that you can have like nice tidy bins with pantry stuff like all the extra boxes of pasta that you have and maybe you keep one or two in the kitchen and that could be the leftover stuff um and then my third tip for that would be like reevaluate the space because there's very nice like narrow cubbies that you could even find through Ikea or Wayfair or Amazon that might not be very expensive but they can just a nice simple white cabinet next to the kitchen or in the living room where that can be extra storage space but I'm like I get rid of all the cardboard boxes also duplicate stuff so a lot of times I will open a cabinet and people have like three or four sets of measuring cups a, do you need three or four sets of measuring cups? If you don't and you're able to get rid of them, I think that creating space that way works. But if you really want to keep it, maybe it doesn't have to live in your kitchen all the time. You can put it in a storage box somewhere else. And then when you need your other new set of measuring cups, you can go in and grab them there. So just figuring out how to minimize your cabinet space, I think, can create more room for stuff like food and snacks. I'd also say too, if you live in a house, consider putting a cabinet in the garage. I have a lot of clients who are building pantry space in the garages. We're seeing a lot of that in garages. We're seeing it in mm -hmm. basements, like they get like, you know, like big, like steel the wire. Yep. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. just like start bucketing it there as well. So it, it's another area. Especially if you do like the Costco BJ's thing, like you don't need to have that all in your kitchen. Yeah. At all. So like you can definitely have backups somewhere else yeah no that's definitely helpful so um let's see what are some of other questions that we have on here how do i do a lot um organize stuff in small spaces with kids i always see you posting stuff with kids and like different like playrooms or living rooms and bookshelves and you know i love seeing it because like you know kids bring so much joy so drea what are some tips to organize small spaces when you have kids Deb, I don't know if you had an influx during quarantine of people. Sure did. Being you like <laughs> toys exploded. I have nowhere yeah. to put them. Please help me. So for sure, I feel like I did more kids and baby things mm -hmm. more than anything recently because a lot of times people are on kid number two or three and they ran out of apartment space. They don't know where to put things. So um Small spaces, one piece of advice I know I mentioned it before is you have to look up. A lot of times I see like short things all around and then there's like these big open wall, bare walls. So I feel like investing in some type of cabinet system or custom unit if you own your place that you can really utilize the height a lot. I also feel like with some kids stuff, like the stuff that's up top, what you can keep there are like arts and crafts supplies, maybe the stuff you don't want them grabbing on their own all the time and they can ask you for it. Also, if they have like toys that maybe they got for their birthday, but you're not opening them yet because it's like not age appropriate yet, stuff like that, like you can put up taller, um, up higher rather. So I feel like you have to like kind of look up a lot and use as much vertical space as you can in small spaces. Um, Oh, <laughs> I'm laughing at the, I don't use any of my height spaces. I see it all the time. And I'm like, you got to look up when it's a small space. Like there's only, you, you don't have that much width to work with. So yeah. that happened to me today. My client's like, I have all these purses. I don't know where to put them. I'm like, if you look up, you have a foot of space from your top shelf to your ceiling. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I never even looked up there. I'm like, yeah. I mean, super cute stylish step stools these days too that you can invest in <laughs> yeah so, um yes yeah. and I think just also being again mindful about what's coming in and what's going out so you don't feel like overwhelmed all the time I just think like always editing is really helpful when it comes to like closets in kids I highly recommend um putting a garment rod in the closet or hooks that are low to the ground, depending on how old your kids are, just to get them to, if you lay out their clothes for them the next day, having them dress themselves and you can lay it on the, out on the hook and it's low enough for them to reach. And all of our closet systems are adjustable. So kids can grow into them. So we can set up a system where you have triple hanging while they're short. And then as they get older, you take the middle rod out and it converts to regular double hanging, but keeping, keeping the design things low for them to grab is helpful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to piggyback off of you, I find a lot of times people are looking to 
relieve clutter by buying furniture instead of like looking inside of the closet space and trying to work that space better. So I think there's usually so much opportunity in closets behind doors and you don't need to spend the extra money on another set of little cubbies or something, but like figuring out a good way to maximize the space you have in your closet before doing that. That's definitely helpful. Like definitely check out their Instagram and social media because they do post a lot of different ideas and things and projects that they're working on. You know, I always get ideas from them for sure. And I've known some of them. Um, I know one of my fellow agents in my office recently used Drea for it. We know a lot of clients that have used Deb and, you know, she's helped design their client um, closets. So definitely, you know, if you have questions, they'll be definitely available offline as well. Um, another great question organizing summer wardrobe versus your winter wardrobe how to store keep sweaters boots and all that good stuff i just want to say one thing before you get into that right um we had the toy tamer on so if anybody has wants to swan dive into kids toys this woman is a magician and make it like she sets it up where your kids want to clean up their toys so follow her and she has workshops okay dre take it away Yes, we I was just thinking, I was like, damn, I forgot to mention the toy tamer. So <laughs> we did. She's awesome. Um, so summer versus winter. I'm a big fan of doing that because I find that why keep all this stuff out all year round if you're not really gonna be able to wear it. And I feel like that's a lot of times when we get in trouble and sort of like there's too many options and you're like, I have all this stuff and I don't know what to wear. I don't know how to style myself because maybe it's 90 degrees outside and you're looking at turtlenecks on a shelf and you feel like you don't have summer clothes. So I feel like, you know, being able to have a good system where you can swap spring, spring summer and fall winter would totally be helpful uh, for sure. And I just think like what I personally do. So I live in a kind of a small apartment in Astoria. Um, I use the top of my closet, the area that I don't access that off often for all my off season clothes and um, shoes. And then whatever I do use is further down. Um, and a lot of times I'll keep my off season stuff in boxes just so it's nice and folded. It's a way I know like moths and stuff won't get to it. And it's just when it's one day comes where it's really cold outside, I'll be able to take everything out and swap it. Um, so I definitely believe that having a system to do that is good. And I feel like it really is like, kind of depends on your space. Some people in a house have an, a spare closet that you can just like swap stuff out. I don't personally have that. And a lot of my clients don't, which is why they call me because we are in like one bedroom small or two bedroom apartments in Long Island city or something where there's not a lot of closet space. Also utilizing under the bed. I feel like a lot of beds now come with built-in storage where you even like lift the mattress up and it's all storage underneath. I think uh, those beds are great for like storing off-season clothes as well as um, any extra bedding. And under the bed, if you have space, they're really great under the bed boxes. Container store has some that are even on wheels. I was doing that before with like my vacation resorty kind of clothes where I had my beach cover ups and kimonos and bathing suits and a bed under my box that even, you know, during the winter, if I were traveling, it's still easy to access, but it's not in my everyday space. That's definitely very, very helpful, I think, for um, everyone as well. Um, I just got kicked out, I think, of the questions. What other questions do we have here while I'm getting back into the sheet? Let's, Let's see. see. In a condo, I had eight clear plastic boxes for storage under the bed. That's awesome. Did you like that system? Did it work? We make a uh, captain's bed sometimes. We don't advertise it, but if somebody's interested in something like that with the drawers underneath, reach out to me. I can get you some pricing. I know um, there was another question of, there was like, if you have deep closet space, what's the best recommendation? Cause that was the last one that I had read before my thing just X'd out. Um, so I'm guessing Deb or Drea, whoever has better suggestions on deep closets, how to like, 
Exactly. Well, Deb, I feel like you talk about design, what would be good. And I'll talk about once the closet's designed, if you still need bins. What yes. Is, so so I guess if we're doing, if it's like a bedroom closet and it's like, I call it a deep reach in. So if it is just like, if you can stand inside of it, but you don't have long sides, um, I would, I would make like design a system that's maybe an L shape. Now it's hard to explain without pulling up CAD, but you can the system's going to stick out into the doorway a little bit, but at least you're not wasting the sidewalls. Maybe we can put some shallow cubbies there for shoes and put your hanging along the back wall. Um, uh, or, I mean, if it's like a linen closet, you can do deeper shelves since linen, linens folds deeper or even pantries too. But I feel like like Skyline Tower, a bunch of the units, it's like a walk-in, but it's not a walk-in. It's deep reach-in. So you're li it feels like a walk-in, but it's not. So um I've been designing with like a hook system for belts, scarves, um, jewelry, um, ties all on the wall and then building on the back wall, the hanging, since the hanging is going to stick out two feet, you should keep that along the back wall and then shallow shelving on the side. So you're not crowding in the entry. Annette is amazed. She could probably get rid of her dresser if she uses her high spaces and installs some shelves. Definitely. Yay, <laughs> I mean, when I go into some houses and just seeing some of the poster girls post, like, honestly, it's impressive of what you could do to transform your space. Um, there's so many different options you have. And Janet, of course, you could ask Deborah a question. Yeah. You need to be unmuted. Oh, here. Wait, hold on. Wait. Oh, wait, Janet, you're mute. I was unmuting you. Hold on. There you go. Are you unmuted? No. No, I'm she's still I'm unmuted oh. now. Okay, so now you know I drank most of my wine. Deborah, I'm working with two clients that oh. are in the process of looking to finish their basements. Awesome. Okay, so they need ideas in how to put that basement together. They know they have to finish the ceiling and the walls and make a laundry room. Mm -hmm. They have children, so they're looking for storage space. Is that something that I could introduce you to? Absolutely. You can send me their contact info if you want to set up an email for sure. Um, definitely, once I've done- daughter, Well, once my daughter and I have another client that's doing the same thing. Oh. Great. Yeah. I mean, basements, there's so much you can do. We can, if it's just clothing, overflow clothing, we can make wall units down there. For basements, I tend to keep everything on stainless steel leveler legs to keep the whole system off the floor right. in case of any kind of flooding that could happen. Yes. Yeah. So we can do drawers. We can do slide out baskets. We can do hanging. We can do shelving. We can do a Murphy bed. We can put a desk. We can do whatever you want. So you, incorporate, <laughs> so. you incorporate your work with the contractor that they're using or that's... Yeah. Well, yeah, I would just say there's just the, I can give the contractor the plans and just tell him what he needs to do in order for us to be able to come in. Awesome. But, I mean, great. if yeah, if the space is under construction, California closet should be the last vendor in the house. We just pretty much need the floors done, the sheetrock up. But, um, you know, if the contractor has general measurements of what the space would be like, I can absolutely begin the design process with them over Zoom. And then our lead, right, our lead time right now is a little on the shaky side because of COVID. So we're like eight weeks out. So you know, if we design together on Zoom and we're going in the right direction and they want to get on the installation calendar, we can schedule them for I'm we're in May right now. With them. I'm going to hook them up with you. Awesome. And that's the end of it for me. You're great, <laughs> Janet. I'll take I'm it. introducing, that's it. Great. Yeah, it, it can be done. Let me know. Uh, awesome. Yeah, just keep it. Okay. Um, let's see. How do I get rid of something if I think I might use it again? Oh, that's a tough one. I mean, so if you really think you might use it again, then maybe you don't need to get rid of it. I also think if it's something that maybe you give yourself like a price limit, like maybe if it's under $20 or something that even if you think you might use it again in four years or something like that, is it worth the real estate space taking up, you know, taking up the real estate space in your home? Or if you really needed to, could you buy it again? Um, so I feel like for me, like $20, $15 is like what I sort of, you know, I've had like weird hardware that took up space in the toolbox. And I was like, listen, I really haven't looked at this in so long. We just renovated our apartment. I'm like, if I really need this at some point again, I'm just going to go to Home Depot and buy it again. And it is what it is, but like, I'd rather have the space. Um, sorry, I was just reading the questions. 
this is great tons of idea i have small children and i have to drop to drop now thank you <laughs> thank you jackie thank you <laughs> a lot of these questions are very similar so like one yeah. apartment limit uh, apartment I limit how do i go between hanging things or creating shelving and then someone also asks like if i'm going to sell my home um how can organizing and closet designs help sell my home and we know decluttered homes sell quicker than cluttered homes okay. i mean especially for photos you want your home to look very crisp in a photo versus stuff everywhere because people want to be able to see themselves coming in and putting their stuff in a home and i'm sure you ladies could add to some of that yeah i've actually had real estate agents contact me to come in and just do the class actually ryan Serhant just sold a 25 million dollar apartment in miami and didn't realize there were no closets in it and he's like can you do something so like we went out we our miami team helped him out but um it is really important and you know again if you just have a pole on a shelf it's really not it's not going to be a desirable space to look at i guess when you're trying to sell i don't know kristen correct me if i'm wrong but i mean we offer like very standard finishes we have a contractor white that will keep the cost extremely low just keep it shelving and hanging. And if it's a standard region closet, it could be $500, depending on what you need, uh, depending on, I mean, we can just keep it super simple. And then we have the plans on file. So if the homeowners that are coming in want to add anything or recustomize it, we can just send an installer and, you know, make whatever reconfigures you want. And yeah. California closets is a capital improvement too. Yes, thank you. So it there's no tax. Value. There's no tax if you're doing the interior of closets and it does add to the value of your home. Mm -hmm. Cost basis, you want it to appreciate in this appreciating market, that's for sure. Yeah, we just tax furniture. So if you're doing a home office um, or an entertainment unit, we have to tax that. But otherwise, closet interiors are tax-free. That was one of the questions we got too. Any suggestions of designing or creating space for a home office? Um, so... That is a big trend in COVID with everyone working from home. So if you guys have any tips or tricks and then we'll get to Inet's question in the chat box. So I'll talk from an organizing point of view. I just, what I've been hearing a lot about is people having a hard time disconnecting at home from work life to personal life. So I've helped a few clients who do have the job, like you were saying before, their bedroom is now their office and they're laying down trying to relax and they're just staring at their computer or notebooks or paperwork. So something I recommend doing is maybe spending a little money to get really pretty boxes or bins that are cohesive or uniform. But that way, at the end of the day, you can kind of like put your stuff away and even tuck it under the bed if you want to, or even if it still sits on top of the computer, it'll look nice. Um, I just feel like that out of sight, out of mind um, environment at home with your work stuff is nice to be able to decompress or even at the end of the weekend, you can do that. Same with like toys that are out, just like being able to have a system where it's like, okay, these things can go away. And when we need them again, they come out. So I love using bins and pretty boxes. Um, even the container store has a really awesome collection of matching uniform office organizing um, supplies. So they'll have like a file box with a matching pen holder with the matching magazine holders where you can put folders in, but it'll just give it a very clean and sleek look. And I just feel like it won't be so cumbersome. Yeah. We had Joanna Thornhill on our podcast. She wrote, my bedroom is an office and other interior design dilemmas. Did I get that title right? Yes. Yeah. She had really cool tips like don't buy office supply stuff. Use a vase for pencils and pens or, you know, take your files or box, you know, paper boxes, wherever you're storing stuff in and put wallpaper on it and make it look a little more delicate than actual storage containers. Yeah. Um, um, so I just feel like making whatever the home office space as zen as possible. And I feel like Deb, you'll talk about this too, but I think you know, being very strategic with what you buy in terms of furniture. Like I know Deb, once you mentioned you got this desk where there's no drawers and I did that too. It's like, oh, I wanted the pretty glass minimal looking desk. And I'm like, 
well, great. I mean, I know that looks nice, but now what? Like I have nowhere to put my, my pens, my paper, my file. So, you know, being kind of just um, strategic with what you actually use and investing in like the right things, I think could be very helpful. Yeah. Um, another thing Joanna said too, when you have a desk like that and you have to shove stuff under the desk, like I do, um, getting a cool sort of fabric and making a, like a cool skirt around your desk. So you're hiding everything that you're storing underneath the desk. Yeah. That looks cool too. Yeah. Um, any design I, stuff? What? Like cl California closet design stuff. Oh, um, I have a lot of clients incorporating LED lighting so they don't have to have a ring light on their desk. So that saves up space on the desktop, uh, which is really cool. Um, I'm trying to get them in court to incorporate Bluetooth speakers into our system. So I'm still working on that. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, but uh, definitely, I mean, what I'm, what I'm seeing, people like the whole continuous built-in kind of look. So um, minimizing any kind of furniture, if you have bulky pieces of furniture in your bedroom, making a you know shallower chest of drawers that turns into a desk so it's just one long unit which has been great i mean i've had great feedback yeah. on that and, and keeping it's nice too because a lot of desks are a standard like two feet deep which for some apartment spaces that that does take up a lot of space but i feel mm -hmm. like if you can customize you can if you just have a laptop you don't need yeah. a that's 24 inches deep. Like you can make something more, more minimal and chic and less intrusive in your space. Yeah. And you know, when you, when you buy pieces of furniture or you buy a desk and you butt it up against the wall, you probably have some sort of floor molding in your room. So when you butt it up against the wall, you have now a gap from the back of the unit to the wall because it's not touching because the unit is resting up against your floor molding. So now you have stuff falling behind the desk. And when you walk in, you're seeing that gap from the back of the desk to the wall. So there's, it's just things to consider when you're debating between spending a couple thousand dollars on a desk or versus you know spending some money on a built-in. Sometimes, depending on where you're looking, the desk in a built-in could end up being the same price, so. Yeah, because I mean, you don't realize when you start adding things on and adding things on and adding things on or buying yeah. an organization system, everything adds up, right? So sometimes it's like, you think less is more, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Like how many times clients will send me like, I just bought these five pieces of furniture from CB2. I'm like, you could have customized your closet for like $800. Like stop buying all this furniture. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So we have a question in the box. It says, how do you suggest decluttering and organizing when you're the only one in the house who cares about it? Husband and five kids don't necessarily care, but the mom does. Oof, tough one. That's a good question for the black therapist when we had him on the podcast. Yes. Um, I would say, unfortunately, I think everyone, when you're really starting that like intense decluttering and organization journey, it really is good to have everybody on board. But if you are the type, if you if you're sort of doing this on your own and the husband and kids are not fully on board. This is when like labels come into play really well, because again, instead of like constantly nagging your husband about putting stuff in the right place, at least it can say it. And whether you have a cleaning person or a nanny or your in-law stay over your husband, the kids, whoever, like every, it's sort it's, it's more of a system. So I know it's hard. Um, I don't have like the best answer for that because like every family is so different, but I feel like it is something I, I had one, one client recently who was just putting on the home edit show, just like to watch it. And her husband who was not really into it and thought it was like kind of stupid at first got really into it and that helped them get on the same page. So maybe subliminally dropping some hints could be good. Or also, like we say in sales, leading by example, if you're constantly, if he's going to see you being so much happier and you have so much more free time and your stuff always looks nice, they might eventually be like, wait, but I want that too. And I want my space to feel like that. That's actually happened with my husband. Now he's very like, his cousin gave him an Xbox. So I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I haven't played Xbox, but I'll try. And it's been on the counter for two days. He's like, I have to give this back. It's too cluttered now. Like, and we don't even use this. And I'm like, great. I didn't even have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
sometimes you got to lead by example, right? Yeah, like exactly. you start doing stuff, people start doing it around you. It's yeah, <laughs> and for sure. Um, does anyone else have any other questions that's on the call right now? Because I mean, I know they took care of a lot of stuff. I know there was a lot of similar questions in um, the questionnaire that we sent out, but I want to make sure I get all of your questions being you showed up here um, engaged and we really appreciate you all being here. And most, I mean, we appreciate Dre and Deb too. Thank you. What other questions? Any other? Inette, you can unmute. Thank you. I I started to not be able to find stuff, so I got annoyed, and I was like, wow, I live by myself, and I'm quote-unquote minimalist, and I can't find stuff now, so I'm like, maybe I have too much stuff, and it's not actually organized, so I got a lot of great ideas. Thank you. Yeah, um, that, that yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know I need shelves, so you had mentioned, I think Deborah said, if, if, I, if we send, like, measurements, you can give mm -hmm. ideas of what you can do with the depth of the closets we have now. Is yeah. That Okay. If you put in your put in your email address, I'll send you. It's like an e-fillable PDF. You can fill in the numbers, and um, we can chat, and I can send you some plans. Where do you yes. live? However, it's a uh, Oakland Garden Alley Pond uh, Co-op. Oh, cool. So they okay. have it where it's like a, a mirror sliding door, which is nice, but it gets stuck. Can't really open it, and then it's just full. Yeah. And then the freaking high ceiling that you mentioned, like. I never go up there, so I just never put anything. Like I throw stuff. There's a couple of stuff like scarves and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Sliding doors are great if you have if you have a smaller room and there's furniture around and you don't have enough space to be able to open doors. But they do get tough because you're not seeing everything in the closet at once. You're only seeing half the closet. So, and especially mirror doors, the older mirror doors too. The mirrors are so heavy that they are going to malfunction at some point. Yeah. So. Oh, that's your email. I mean, I'll email you after. It be like tips on um, like nice boxes that you can stack and use the height. Um, I'm happy to send you some suggestions too. Yeah, like you said. So uh, I didn't realize I actually have a lot of work to do. You have work to do. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. I. Uh, I'm about living your best life and like living your dream life I know it sounds so corny but I don't know like I feel like on Saturdays or Sundays when I have a day off I'd much rather be doing things I like than having to clean up all the time mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so someone's building a new home and wants it to be perfect where the heck does she start I know Dre is gonna say purge before you move Dre <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So many clients are like, I was going to purge and edit before I move, but then I just decided to throw everything in boxes and now I'm two weeks in and really stressed out. So whatever, I feel like when it's a new blank slate, a new home, bring everything that you really, really love and care about and the rest, you know, let it go. Um, and also it's so hard knowing like where to start, but I feel like storage is, you know, besides obviously the foundation of the house and the kitchen and all that stuff, but just really thinking about like storage before you even buy, like, I, I always feel like do closets first and then figure out what furniture you need versus like buying all this furniture you probably don't need and you could just maximize the closet. Yeah, that's definitely helpful. Does anyone else have any other questions? Because Janet does. Let's go, Janet. You know that I'm no, You got it? Good. This is personal. <laughs> okay. This past year, I actually had a great year, even though we were in lockdown, but my closet, my clutter, my husband's clutter. Ah! Anyway, we did a clothing drive at Keller Williams, which was great, la -da -da, but it was only a seasonal clothing drive. So I packed up a lot of stuff that I know I'm not going to wear, suits, so on and so forth. Okay, so take that out of the equation now. I still have so many clothes. Yes, a lot of my clothes I spent a lot of money for. It's not that I want to reap that cash back, but it's just I spent that money, so I have a hard time giving it away. So it's there. I keep moving it around. I'm getting frustrated. I have clothes on the floor. I, have, I had a broken toe since January. I'm wearing one boot. 
not the other. So I have, you know, if anybody needs a right boot, <laughs> tell me that's a size eight and a half because they're all in good condition because they've never been worn. Um, that being said, I have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of stuff. How do we know? Oh, and then this is the kicker. I also gained almost 30 pounds this year. So what do you get rid of? Like, how do you go from this? What do you save? So I have a question for you, quick. Do you, do you have, do you have any other closets in the house where if, if it's not everyday clothes, you can put them in a different space, like a guest yes. room or something? I happen to be in a condo, but yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. So, you know, definitely. Okay. Wait, the answer is yes, but I still have my kids clothes in the house and they don't live here. Well, there's your problem, Janet. <laughs> Tell them to come pick up their clothes. They don't want to come and get it. They look at me like I have four heads. My son <laughs> moved into the city, took most of his stuff. He did a great thing. He bought an apartment. And you know what, like you said, the high space you have in the closet, but the wall, the ceiling comes down. So oh. you really have it little access. His contractor took that whole thing and opened it. They ordered custom clo closet um, doors. And it opened up so much extra space for him. You wouldn't do that in a rental, but if you own something, it's definitely worth the investment because there's so much more space to use and use it comfortably. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree more with that because I just feel like it'll take stuff off the floor and it'll be more of a system. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. And regarding the stuff you're hanging on to, um, you know, I know it's money, but like, what's the, other I don't want the money back. It's just in my head that I spent like certain designer things and clothing. And I know I I'm not going to wear it again. It would be helpful maybe to resell it if it's nice designer stuff, but like, why are you not wearing it now? Is it because you don't like how it, it looks? I'm three sizes bigger than, <laughs> than I ever was, you know, and like, let's say you were like, you're back to that weight tomorrow would you be wearing that stuff again or probably, still... probably not yeah so Even if it, it looks like it's back in style when you look at it's not it cuts are different like you know i know for sure i'm never wearing crazy low-rise jeans again i don't well, care i'm not that's for sure i become if that I will never wear those. Like they're not comfortable. And my underwear was always hanging out of them. So sure. I spent the money on the low rise seven jeans because everyone was doing it, but it was just taking up prime real estate in my closet. And I don't even really. Exactly. Love so Andrea, I, also, I think I need you. <laughs> yeah. I, I need also, think, house. you know, I also think a lot of times we don't uh, wear stuff because we don't know how to style it. And we've had a few stylists on our show, like Liz on our podcast, Liz Teich, the New York stylist is one of them. Melanie Littman's also really, really great. I think actually she would be great for you. What she does is someone, she'll come and make like outfits out of the stuff you already have and tell yeah, you. I don't think that that's not my problem. Yeah. Cause yeah. I feel like a lot of times we don't wear certain things cause we don't know what to wear them with. And again, we sort of bought it on sale. It's like, sure. I got this purple top. It was 20 bucks. I'll find something to wear it with. And then it's like, you know, I really don't know how to wear it. And now I just bought it. Do I get rid of it already? Or do right. I, you know, so, um, well, it sounds like these are pieces that you spent a lot of money on. And you just don't want to get rid of. So then I would just kick your son out of the closet. Oh my God. It's not even my son. It's my daughter who lives, who's the one that needs the basement done. Who lives okay, so soon she'll get out of the house. Then then it'll free up a closet. You can I downsize to a condo and the stuff is still here. But yeah, I mean, regard, I, my opinion is even if it, it fit you tomorrow, would you still ever wear it and be happy with it? If the answer is no, then let it go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say one thing to the person who's building a house. I think that was Jennifer. Um, yeah. So I find that a lot of people when they're building new houses and there's 10 plus closets, wherever the case may be. I don't recommend doing every single closet at first because your needs might change. I would focus on the bedroom closets, the pantry, the coat closet, all the, you know, the major, the, the important ones. And then other spaces that's like random miscellaneous closets in the basement and whatnot. Hold off until you're after, until after you're moved in and settled because your needs might change. 
That's I said a lot with garages too. I'm like, yo, move in first. We don't know what we're putting in here yet. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> and garages get pricey. They are not cheap. Yeah. And that's the thing. Some people bite off more than they could chew. Right. So it's like, you yeah, start doing things ahead of the same. And then like some, maybe a, a product is run out or this or that, like life happens. Yeah. And I was had a, uh, sorry, Deb, I recently that's had a client who moved from a Westchester house and downsized to an apartment and he was still buying the Costco size toilet papers and paper towels. And he's like, well, I was used to this like garage and he's like, and also he was laughing. He's like, I have to buy apartment size cereal. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, he didn't register. He's like, you know, like the apartment size. I was like, the regular size? And you're buying jumbo ones at BJ's or whatever? He's like, yeah. And he's like, you know, my cabinets now don't fit the big ones. So I feel like sometimes I notice like, that when you do kind of design a pantry space or something, you kind of shop to what it fits nicely versus the other way around, like buying all this stuff and then figuring out where does it go as opposed yeah. to knowing your space and then you can shop accordingly. I think that was helpful for everyone because I see a lot of good points. It's overwhelming. Uh, Great. Any other questions? I know it's seven o'clock and I want to be mindful of everyone's time. And, you know, we're really appreciative of Dre and Deb for hosting these events with us because every time we do them, I feel like these events get the most traction and people always have questions about organizing closets, no matter. And I also see a lot of repeat faces on these often because, you know, we go through different things at different times in our lives. And sometimes we might have learned something, but we need to hear it again and again and again, until it ingrains in us. So I'm definitely gonna try to look to get them in, in our office, like to do a training with our office perhaps, because I think they have great energy. They'd be in alignment with culture. Um, Caitlin saying it's great. Thank you everyone, because it's coming I from keep thinking Oh yeah, I'm like, when I look at it, I'm like, I'm over here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so if anyone else has any other questions, if there's anything Dre or Deb want to add, um, definitely check out their podcast, definitely check out their Instagram. We will definitely send their contact and whatever information um, they want to share with you out in the email. When we say thank you, we recorded it. I'll upload it to YouTube. I'll share the link with everyone as well for your purposes if you need to share it with others as well. Yes, thank you. Yeah, um, the podcast is Two Girls, One Closet podcast. We're on Apple, Spotify, Art, Heart Radio, literally, honestly, anywhere where you can find a podcast. And my Instagram is dream underscore organization. And I post a ton of before and after pictures, as well as closet tips and organizing tips. Yeah, DM us. Don't be strangers. Yeah. I love a good DM. Yeah, they're very friendly and approachable. <laughs> and you definitely will probably see us around Queens sometime over the summer. That's where we're going to get together, finally. Um, no. <laughs> Very cool, guys. Well, thank you. Hope to meet Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs>